Give him a cold water enema, bring his core temperature down from 107 to 98.6, and Corey Stringer would still be alive today. But everybody's waiting for the doctors to do it. Now, if there had been an Eagle Scout there, he'd have lived. But all poor Corey had was the top sports medicine doctors. <laughs> Gatorade only has two nutrients, sodium and potassium, both of which are useful, but that's only two. What about the other 58 minerals? What about the gallium? What about the selenium? What about the zinc? What about the copper? Zero, 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 zero. People say, well, it's not convenient. Well, then die. <laughs> Yeah, death is a very inconvenient thing. <laughs> Time Magazine. If you want to know what's going on in health, read Time and Newsweek Magazine. December 2004, a little over a year ago, big article on high blood pressure. The stealth killer, America's high blood pressure crisis is spinning out of control. How can we have a high blood pressure crisis? We've got calcium channel blockers. We've got beta blockers. We've got all these diuretics. And we have exercise and fitness systems. More people involved with that than ever before. People are losing weight. You know, the obesity problem is hopefully getting under control. We're doing everything the doctors say. And it's spinning out of control. That's because you cannot fix a mineral deficiency problem with surgery and drugs. Amen. What's the first thing a good farmer puts out for his livestock out in the pasture? A salt block or a salt lick, isn't it? There's nobody out in the pasture telling a cow she's limited to one lick a day, is there? No, I refuse to believe that my human patients are dumber than a cow or a goat or something like that. And so I say, go ahead and salt your food to taste. Well, how do I know if it's too much? Well, it'll taste salty. If it's... That's high tech as I can get. July 1997. July 1997, just about nine years ago now, the presentation at the American Heart Association's annual meeting in Portland, Oregon. Doctors lack proof that too much salt is unhealthful. After years of telling healthy people that too much salt isn't good for them, researchers still don't have solid evidence to back up that claim. The same study, it was called the Sodium Task Force, just a different newspaper, they kind of came at it a little different direction. They said, the study, the Sodium Task Force found that people who limited their salt intake to 1,000 milligrams or one gram a day like their doctors wanted them to do, had 600% more or six times more heart attacks than those who defy their doctors and consume more than double. If you followed your doctor's instructions, you're not going to make it. So says September 2000, Scientific American. Remember that? If you take your, your diuretics, it's only going to get rid of more minerals. Scientific American, February 1999. They went to... Nigeria, out in the bush, where people have never seen a doctor in a white coat, they've never seen a stethoscope, they've never heard of diuretics or calcium channel blockers, and they started taking blood pressures, and they found that 7% of these people living out in a very primitive circumstances out in the bush, 7% had high blood pressure. They came back to Chicago, did a lot of DNA testing, found a lot of people whose ancestors had originated in Nigeria during the old slave trade days in the 1600s, 1700s, and they started taking their blood pressure, and 33% of them had high blood pressure. They knew immediately, without doing another single one penny's worth of research, that it's not genetic. Because it was genetic, it'd be 7% and 7%, or 33% and 33%, because where you are in the world will not change how genetics expresses itself. If you have a genetic problem in Nigeria, you're going to have the same genetic problem in Bolivia. If you have that same genetic problem in Bolivia, you're going to have the same genetic problem in New York. It doesn't matter where you are on earth. If you have a genetic problem, you have a genetic problem. So you know immediately, fourth grade biology is not genetic. So what's the difference here? Well, the people in Nigeria out in the bush are still putting their wood ashes, their plant minerals into their food. They're still fertilizing their garden with it. They still use wood as a fuel. And the guys in Chicago are living on diuretics and calcium channel blockers and statin drugs to lower cholesterol and Church's fried chicken and Pepsi Cola and Coca Cola, Gatorade, hua. Okay, now, six years later, the British Medical Journal. Six years later, the British Medical Journal, remember guys, the same one that said sex twice a week gives you 50% more longevity. Wow. Hoo -ah. So we got to believe them, right? High blood pressure in blacks, not genetic. This is January 2005. High blood pressure in blacks, not genetic. High blood pressure in whites, not genetic. High blood pressure in human beings, not genetic. High blood pressure is not genetic. You've heard me say many times, we've eliminated 900 different diseases in animals with those little pellets and canned dog food with all the vitamins and minerals in it. Well, dogs and canaries and worms and crickets and, and monkeys and guinea pigs can all get high blood pressure. Cows get high blood pressure. But they don't get it when you give them those little pellets because we have everything in there to prevent the high blood pressure because we don't have insurance to pay for these drugs and surgeries and things. How do you tell a dog, well, you better sign up for a fitness center and take you know, diuretics and calcium channel blocker? And so... If we do what we've done for our animals, 
we cannot fail. We can eliminate high blood pressure not only in, in the world, but we can eliminate high blood pressure in the black community, in the white community, in the human community. In 90 days, if everybody would take all 90 essential nutrients, focus on the intake of what? Calcium. And stay away from the fried foods, stay away from the carbonated drinks. And watch what happens to that high blood pressure. I'd rather take the drugs. I just can't give up my Popeyes. <laughs> You're going to die. Whether you believe it or not, how many have ever heard that elevated cholesterol and triglycerides are the basic root cause of coronary artery disease and artery disease? Sure, we've all heard that, right? Well, if you can find me any disease that's caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides, it'll give you a million dollars, small bills, tax-free in any offshore account you want. There's not a single disease caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. It's a signal that you have a deficiency of niacin, vitamin B3, a deficiency of chromium vanadium, a deficiency of omega-3 essential fatty acids. You could have early hypothyroidism or goiter. You can have early diabetes. All those things will cause elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides, but elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides cause no disease. And so that's why all these statin drugs and all the aspirin that everybody's been taking, all this stuff, we now rank 46th in the world in longevity, doing what doctors have told us, spending $1.9 trillion a year for health care. We rank 46th in the world. Does that make any kind of sense? You're an MBA. Does that make any kind of sense? No. Huh? Bad investment. Bad investment. Bad investment. Come in 46th and you're spending more than all the other 91 nations in the world put together? Here's this little Bolivia and they're using llama manure for fuel. They have 20 times the 100-year-olds than we do. Hello? Are we getting a clue here? So what causes coronary artery disease? What causes clogged arteries? What causes it? How many of you heard of free radicals, trans fatty acids? Yeah. Where does it come from? Well, look at that. Now, we've known this for 50 years. But doctors say, oh, you've got to give up that dairy products and butter and animal fats. And you've got to go to, to margarine and, and cooking oils. Well, they live to be 56. Why do you believe them? They die of heart attacks and strokes. Why would you believe them? I want you to think of your grandparents, your moms and dads, and your aunts and uncles. How many of you had a mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandparents who lived to be in their 80s and 90s? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many of you had any of them lived to be in the hundreds? Hundred. Yeah, there's a handful in here. And I guarantee you they ate four to six eggs for breakfast. They ate butter instead of margarine. They didn't have margarine back in those days. They ate butter. They cooked in lard. They ate their chicken skin. Can you imagine, any, can you imagine my grandfather tearing the chicken skin off the chicken before he ate it? Using anything else but real butter, eating tofu on a beef farm. Hello. So it's the free radical damage, the lining of the arteries that causes coronary artery disease. Well, you get rid of the free radicals in your life. Why is that called the heart attack, stroke, and cancer belt of America in the Old South? Fried foods. Gosh, this is so easy. Give up the fried foods. You take in all your antioxidants, selenium, OPC. Very easy. I'm 66 years old. My blood pressure is 121 over 71. My resting pulse is 47. If I were to go to a doctor for a physical now, they would have a hemorrhage. They'd send me in for a pacemaker. What? Your resting pulse is 47? You, you're going to have a heart attack. Really? Well, let's see who can lift the most weight and keep alive here, doc. Also, low cholesterol makes you stupid. I <laughs> love that study. Well, they took almost uh, 800 men and 1,100 women, they divided them into two groups, those with blood cholesterols below 200, which they thought were going to be the healthiest and smartest, and those with blood cholesterols above 240. And the ones who had blood cholesterols above 240 were 49% smarter than the ones who had blood cholesterol below 200. hoo <laughs> Low-fat diets lose their luster for heart attack, stroke, breast cancer, colon cancer. There's no difference in the rate between a low-fat diet and a high-fat diet. No difference whatsoever. Obesity is now, it was on television again this morning, is the number one preventable killer. There's 16% of American kids who are obese. By the year 2010, they say that 75% of Americans will be overweight and 40% will be obese. Now this is despite all these surgeries, beside all the drugs, uh, there's more people involved with fitness than ever before. That's because we're living on too much carbohydrates and not enough people are taking in nutrients, especially minerals. Sweet fruit drinks make pudgy kids fatter. Fruit juice, fruit juice. I'm not giving my kid Pepsi, I'm giving him apple juice. We're living on dry cereals and apple juice. They go to school with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They come home and eat Kraft's macaroni and cheese and the parents think they're giving them a good diet. There's nothing but carbohydrates and sugar. There's not even anything green and leafy or tomatoes in there, nothing. Nothing but sugar and carbohydrates, no vitamins and minerals. And the kids, you know, got ADD and ADHD and, and you know he's gonna be a serial killer when he grows up. Right? 
Well, this is the cause of obesity in America. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to tell you. You can see where the horses have chewed that uh, rail of that wagon out. This is called pica. You've all read about pica or cribbing. Uh, the only thing that will cause this behavior where they eat dirt or chew on the fence or uh, wooden implements and things like that is a mineral deficiency. Some minerals are worse than others, but all mineral deficiencies cause this behavior in animals, pike or cribbing, where they eat other things other than food. And it's not boredom, it's they're minerally deficient. Pregnant women are legendary for getting cravings during pregnancy. Why is that? Because the baby, as it's developing, is stealing minerals from the mother, and if she's not taking in enough to counteract that, they crave things. In the Old South, where they have the heart attack, stroke, and cancer belt of America, they eat um, cornstarch. How many of you heard of women eating cornstarch when they're pregnant? Yeah. And what about clay? They go out in the yard and eat clay when they're pregnant. People come to me and say, Doc, am I sick? Am I crazy? I, I have this craving for clay. No, you're just pregnant, my dear. And so